My name is Elizabeth McGriff, and I live at 618 Cedarwood Terrace, and I'm a home defender. I got involved with Take Back the Land. Cassandra was knocking on the door when I, um, in, I think it was in June, and she, she told me about Take Back the Land, how they can help people stay in their homes. So I went to the meeting, and I joined, and was been, been there ever since. I think it's important. I think pe it's important for people to stand up for um, things that are wrong and things that happen in the community. There's an increase of people homeless in this community. It's not that. It's not like that because of. Um, it's because of people kind of comply and that's okay and you know, but it doesn't have to be like that. We're a community, and my family has been in this community for years. Mm -hmm. my, my parents came from Detroit into Rochester in the 50s, um, and they've been here, and they built, you know, they worked hard and, you know, did everything that they, that they were supposed to do, you know. You work hard, you labor, you get ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it seems a shame that somebody can come along and um, all your hard work that you do and just take it from you. And it shouldn't happen. You know, I put <laughs> 15 years of labor into it to, to, um, to stay in my house. So I just don't want to just walk away from it. And that's the hard part. That's the real hard part, just to walk away and say, you know, I labored for nothing and I basically have nothing, you know, if you take that away. Well, I bought my home um, in 2001. I originally bought it from Homestead and then it switched over to Homeside and then Midland Bank took it over in 2003. When, after I bought it, you know, it was like the happiest thing that I had um, going for me. My children were fairly young. My youngest one was 10 months and my oldest one was about, um, he was about five when we moved into our home. And I worked for the same company for 10, 10, 10 years and then I was let go from that company. Then I ran into financial difficulty with keeping the home. When I went on unemployment, I was making enough money to pay the mortgage, but um, after the unemployment ran out, I did find um, another job, but it wasn't as much as I was making, you know, when I first purchased the home. And um, wasn't able to keep up with the payments, got further behind. 2011, I lost my job working for the post office because I was injured, you know, on, on the job. After that, um, the bank started foreclosing on me. They wouldn't really um, negotiate anything. They basically they wanted the money that I. It was either give us the money that you owed from behind, or you know we couldn't do anything else for you. I mean it's going into foreclosure. And then once we went through the court system in 2012, um, we tried to do a modification. I went through HUD. I went through um, Legal Aid Society to get help and um, I couldn't get assistance because my income wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that, it was very low. The bank foreclosed on me and during that time period I did get a job and, um, you know, we did a modification and, um, and plus I was going to have my, I did a modification with um, the housing council and with that modification because I was getting unemployment at the time and my sister had a daycare that was in my home mm -hmm. and my son was living there and he was working full he was working full time so he was going to contribute and with the funds that we had we had enough you know to um, to to keep the house but um, Midfirst didn't want to hear that the lady at the housing council was very frustrated because you know or the the gentleman that was helping me at the time was very frustrated because um, they wouldn't accept anything. And so the, it went to court and um, basically they um, 
it went before Judge Doyle and then nothing happened after that time period for a year. And my case got switched from Judge Doyle to Judge Ark, which I don't even know why, but um, it happened. With Judge Ark, um, they, the bank sent a letter saying that um, that they that they couldn't um, continue with the foreclosure because I could make meet the needs financially, um, and then they said, so you know, I had a court date on April 9th of 2014, and um, so I was like happy, you know, because you know I don't. They're not going to go ahead with the foreclosure. That was the letter I got from the bank's attorney. I later found out in July that they went ahead with the foreclosure and that my house was basically going up for auction. So um, I went to the auction and the bank bid $500 for my property. Even before I even got there, they had already bid for it. And the, the, um, the auction started at 8, we were, I mean, 8.30. We were there um, at, I think it was 10 after 8. We heard nothing of any exchange about the auction or nothing. So I went up to the auctioneer and, and asked him, you know, um, what about 618 Cedarwood Terrace? And he said, oh, the bank already bid for that. I was like, I was standing here all the time. Um, how, did they, how did they bid for it when it, I didn't even hear it? And he said, well, we can do it again. And so then we bid, so then I bid um, 600 because the bank bid 500. And then the bank um, bid 115,000 for my home. So um, that was pretty much the end of that. And even, um, even going through the paperwork, um, I asked Mid first, you know, give me, you know, the information from the beginning of who, you know, how much have I paid on it and yeah. the whole history of the mortgage and the house. And um, they said, well, they can't give me anything before 2003. That's when they took it over. So anything before that, they couldn't speak to. After talking to them, um, they basically said, We're, we just want you out. When I went to the last, it was like a, I had gotten eviction notice from the court. Usually that's served through the city court, but for some reason this was served in the county court. Um, went before Judge Ark again, and he basically said, you know, um, the bank's attorneys didn't even show up. Um, and basically he asked me, when, when could I be out? And I said, well, I'm filling out paperwork for Occupy, Occupy Conveyance, um, which gives you, you know, a little more time to stay in the home and um, to pay, you know, like a, um, like a renter's fee for the home. And he said, well, um, well, I'll give you another month to be out. Um, so he's giving me till August 1st, you know, to get out, be out of the home. So that's what it is. And the Occupy Conveyance, has anything happened with that or not? Um, I haven't heard anything back from HUD. HUD has to approve it. But had I not gone to this, you know, had I not gone through this, then I would never know. Um, just like a lot of people, they go through um, the foreclosure, but they never know what's out there. They don't, they never know what, what you know, can help or what programs. And, I mean, it's sort of like a... Um, like a well-kept secret you know it's a secret and nobody tells until you 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 you're through the process oh you don't qualify because now the bank owns your home okay where were you like a year two years ago I wish the program were <laughs> was actually to help um, the biggest thing which is the bottom line I think is that they would was telling me as though you need to get income. Well, I know that, but um, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm out there doing every day. So when I um, was going through my situation, um, you know, the housing council did try to help. They, they, they worked with me to create a budget and um, 
basically they said all the bank needs to know is that you can handle the, the finances. Um, so they, they helped in that way. But as far as um, the program that I found out about, found out about after, well, they were one of the the, um, the people that funded it, you know. So where was that information prior to? Yeah, I know it's like you know, I'm saying I've been there. I put too much into it to just walk away and say, you know, oh, you can have it. And let somebody else, you know, live in it. Just to anybody that's kind of going through the same thing, if you can come out and support, you know, what we're doing at Take Back the Land and kind of help support it, um, just show up at um, the rallies if you have any information about it. Because um, I think if enough people get be gets behind this, then we can make um, a change to how foreclosures happen and. Um, and change programs and policies. And that's what I'm hoping, that this policy will be changed.